Today, I want to share with you my three-step memorization technique that has been absolutely game-changing for me so that you can memorize your lines faster, get out of your head, and focus on your connection to story. Hey guys, my name is Hans Christopher. I am an actor, coach, and creator of the Working Actor series, and I hope you enjoy today's lesson. With that, let's dive in. Well, thank you guys so much for showing up to uh, day three of the Working Actor Daily Lesson Series. Uh, today, I am going to do it on my three-step memorization guide. It is something that I came up with that has helped me significantly. I was always somebody who, uh, if you heard my story and heard the way I got into this, I was very shy, I had a ton of stage fright. So what ended up happening with me is words and memorization became incredibly challenging because it was the thing that made I was so embarrassed of you know if I dropped my lines if I if I even if I thought of too much about my lines you would see it on my face you would see how nervous I'd get you'd see how in my head I'd get how uncomfortable I'd get and and it is just it doesn't set you in a, in a good place so for me I was a, able to come up with this kind of I didn't come up with this technique it's I pulled from different people who've helped me and guided me in fact one of the things I, I got from reddit maybe like six or seven years ago maybe you guys have seen it uh, and then I kind of incorporated it into my system and the way that I do things with everything this is this is a thing that I use um, this is a thing that's helped me it doesn't mean it is going to be your thing if this is something that you think could help try it on test it for a few auditions test it with your hundred tape challenge see how it works um, there are some actors who really you know, I tried to be this way. There are a lot of actors who, who look at it as um, they don't want to get too on the lines because if they over rehearse or over memorize, they think it takes away from the life. And for them, that may be that may be true. I, I had this. I said this for a long time. And what I found is what we're looking for is are things to not get us in our head and not do things the same way. Right. For me. It was far more. It was, it was far more important to feel confident and feel okay in the audition. That allowed my play, my, I call it my child artist, to come out and feel safe enough to start playing and doing different things. Um, when I saw myself thinking, trying to remember the lines, trying to come up with what I was doing, I, I could see it clear as day. I could see myself thinking of the lines. I wasn't free to have other thoughts. I wasn't free to do other things. And we as humans... You know, the most real thing is watching somebody think about somebody, something else while you're saying something, right? That is human. That is what we do all the time with everything. We're probably thinking about two or three things. Um, so f it became so clear to me that I was thinking about my lines, that I was worrying about this thing coming up. And what I found a lot of times in my rehearsals is that as I was rehearsing or trying to memorize lines, those parts that were tough, to memorize for whatever reason, the way the words were, the way things worked, were those moments that when the shit hits the fan and the pressure is on, that would drop. Those were always the moments. I actually have a test I'll tell you about at the end that that is a good test to show you those moments that that are going to cause problems. Uh, so that, with that said, let's, let's dive in. Um, and I'll do this. This should be a pretty quick lesson. And then, as always, if you guys have any questions at the end, feel free to... Um, ask me and then at the end of this I'll also share with you um, the PDF for this so that you have a little sheet if you want it to kind of walk you through especially if you're doing the 100 tape challenge um, I'm also going to be doing at a future point um, kind of goes along with the chess thing that I was talking about but a way to review your tapes um, and a process you can go through that kind of takes the judgment out of it takes the good or bad out of it but really helps you understand where it is you're you're lacking or you're not doing what you would want to be doing i think the review process is such an important part of it uh, i do think we need to get to a place where when you send the tape in it's done that's it um, and you it, that side of it your artist side of it and your director side of it can let it go but i do think with every one of your tapes there's an opportunity to start seeing what are the patterns here how am i showing up how did I feel? Um, and if you can start answering those questions and go through a process of reviewing your tapes, you're going to find you will get better on your own, uh, significantly better on your own. 
so that'll come out probably within the next week. I'll do one on that. Um, just for, for you guys that are planning to do the 100 tape challenge, I think it'll help. Uh, that said, here is the three step memorization technique. Um, so the first thing that I do is um, I turn my text into acronyms. So you get, the first thing I do obviously is you get your audition, you get your sides, right? Uh, I print them out. I make sure I print, now I do one copy because I don't like the waste paper and then I'll highlight in two different colors because where I usually read my auditions is it's pretty dark. So it's a whole thing. What I would say before I say any of this, get yourself into a routine in the rote part of it. For my process, there's two parts. There's the rote part, the memorization of the lines, which is what this is. And then there's another part to the audition process where I am trying to feed that child artist. I'm trying to feed it information. And that that's different every time. That's using my story. That's using different things to try and connect to uh, the character. And that'll be another lesson that I have that... Um, I call it tethering to the person, the character you're playing. It's a great way, a great tool to quickly um, make their story your story and, and combine those things. But today it's going to be just on memorization and just kind of the rote side of your brain. So, so the first thing I do is I'll print them out. Um, I'll highlight the different lines. I'll print out a sheet so I know the casting director, do a little bit of research on things. But then with the text, I will turn all of my lines into acronyms. Uh, that is the first letter of each one of my lines. So if it was the example that I have here is if it's to be or not to be, that is the question. It's And I do this the exact grammar as well. So it's T-B-O-N-T-B, -T comma, T-I-T-Q, period. Use every punctuation and do that as the line. Um, so it's... Basically what we're going to be doing now is turning each line into an acronym. And I don't even use... Uh, my reader yet. There's nothing about the reader. It's just the line and if it's a paragraph It's a, if it's a little bit of a monologue that all goes together how it's written and then it goes to the next line And I'll do that for my entire set of sides or however many sides there are What I've found is for me my my brain tends to see it in these chunks and and everything that you include even the commas even the periods Without re realizing it, your brain picks that stuff up and starts to understand it. Um, now, I'm not trying to do this to, to memorize it in any sort of way. This is just rote. I'll usually me say it out loud in many different ways. I'll sing it. I'll emphasize different letters. Um, but for this part, you're just going to make a list of your acronyms. So I do this as soon as I get this. I write these out. I put them on a sheet. I have a separate sheet by itself that I do this on. And I usually title the character scene one, and then the acronyms, all the acronyms all the way through. My next step that I do is I use um, an app, which you guys probably know of. I use Rehearsal Pro. Uh, now, if you guys have another app that you like, I know this can be a little buggy sometimes. If you guys have another app you like, uh, write it in the chat. I'd love to check something out. If there's people who used to use Rehearsal Pro and they use something else now, uh, I'd love to check other stuff out if you think something works better for you. For me right now, I use Rehearsal Pro. Uh, and on the recording app, if you don't know what that is, it's an app that you can download uh, and speak your sides, your lines, or the other person's lines into uh, recording. So what I do is, is after I've written down my acronyms, I then put, get, pull up Rehearsal Pro. You can download your sides and your script into Rehearsal Pro, and then I record the other person's lines. Right? So I'll record whatever the other actor uh, is saying. I'll record it as if they're in the scene. Now, I've made a, a, a practice of this. One of the exercises I, I did a, a long time ago was in trying to work with different characters and do different things. I, I've kind of made it a point every time I pick up sides to try and dive into that as quickly as possible. So I use the recording of this other person's sides as an exercise to do it as best as I can. Do their lines as best as I can. If they have an accent, I try the accent. I don't care how bad it is, I just try to put it on. I try to make that scene as real as possible. Now it's hard because it's a recording um, and your reader isn't gonna do the same thing that you're doing in the recording. 
but I, and so I wouldn't get used to playing it off of that. But just use this as an exercise. This is one of those small things that the, the better you get at doing this, it's only going to help you down the road. Um, there's two parts of kind of growth. I, I see this as, as raising your floor, doing something that can raise your floor. And that'll be another lesson I have in the future is, is how to raise your floor versus how to raise your ceiling. Um, but so what I do then is I record the other person's line. Um, while I give, make sure to give the space and silence for your lines, right? So you have to record it, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of mumble my lines, or I'll have it next to me and mumble my lines that I've that I've written out. Um, then the third thing I do, and this is the third step, is I read it out loud. And this is this is the process that I go through now, which has helped me so much. Is the first thing I do is I'll have my phone sitting in front of me. I'll have the acronym sheet underneath that. And then I'll have the sides laid out. Say there's three pages, one, two, three in front of me. So form this little pyramid, right? The recording will start. And at first, I will just read it off of the sides. Um, so so the recording that I recorded will, will play the other character's lines. And I'll read it through in rote. I'm not trying to read it in any way where I, specific, where I say it the same any time. And I'll read it through every time while I kind of get, get the understanding of what's going on. And then I'll do it a second time, same thing, and then I'll do it a third time. So it'll be back to back to back. I've read it off the sides. And then what I do is I switch the sides. I pull the acronym sheet down. I put the sides up. Now I'm just looking at the acronym sheet I have. So it's just the first letter with the punctuation of that scene. And what I find is you'll know much more than you thought you would already. So I'll start to go through and I'll just try and do what I just did one time the first time using the acronyms if there's any place that i mess up i go right back above me to the to the page i continue the scene all the way through the end i do that three times as well and then i move that to the side and just try and do it from memory and only have the acronym sheet in front of me so if i can't remember something i look down to the acronym sheet that i've created and I'll go up and what I found is for the most part, there's sometimes it can be difficult if you have really long dialogue or, or big monologues with, that are very wordy. But for the most part, I can get off tape in 15 to 30 minutes or off, uh, off book in 15 to 30 minutes using that technique. Um, it's, it's something that tremendously helped me because I used to have to spend, uh, memorization was not easy for me. Memorization was something that was challenging and even with how much i did it i would still show up and i'd fuck up some of my lines i'd, I'd have certain places that i'd get in my head so that's the first part now as i do this remember i'm not i'm not trying to do it in the way it's supposed to be done or the way my head's envisioning the scene allow it to be free when you say it say it in different ways or just do it monotonous completely wrote and monotonous at first um, you just want to stay away from, from getting into line readings and, and doing it the same every time. Um, that said, there's, there's a next step, kind of a bonus that I've done with this, um, once that I do with myself. Uh, this actually came from, uh, I booked a movie. This was insane. I booked a movie three days before it started shooting. And I had to shoot, all my shoot days were the first four days of, the film so somebody dropped out um, I got hired three days before 26 pages of dialogue and you know it was one of those things where it's just like you, you just have to do it you just have to figure it out you know and and what's funny is when you're put in positions like that you figure it out you find a way to get it done you find a way to do it um, but this kind of led me to this moment of like oh wow there I need Sometimes you don't have the opportunity to go through the process that you want to. And sometimes you need to be able to figure things out and just get yourself to a place um, by doing it. You know, and at the time, my entire process was a very slow process is of using imagery and using um, descriptive kind of images to fill in the pieces. It was a much slower process. It was It's great. It's incredible for what it can do with life behind the eyes. But... When you don't have that time, it's you you know you have to figure something out. Um, so this helped me absolutely tremendously. But the next thing that I that I found was I kind of came up with this theory of of there's off brain or off book 
versus off brain. And what I mean by that is is when you it's exactly what I was talking about. When you when you go into an audition, when you see somebody on tape, you can see them thinking about the lines. My goal was to separate the thoughts, say the lines so that I could actually fill it in with other thoughts. Things that were maybe counterintuitive to what I was saying. Um, and so I started thinking of different ways of how, how could I do that. So some of the techniques or some of the exercises they do, once I've done that first process of getting off book, is now the process of trying to get off brain. Um, so one of, the, one of the tools or one of the techniques that you can try and see if this works for you, um, and this is what I was talking about earlier, this is a great way to figure out those moments that you are not secure with, those moments that are going to cause you problems um, later. Find a point after you've gone through the first three steps. Find a point. Make sure you're standing. Find a point on the wall to look at. So you're going to want to look at a point on the wall, one dot, and try and do the Rehearsal Pro to that dot without blinking. So, so it's going to cause you to have to speed up a little bit. It's going to cause you to have to really focus. And what you'll find is, is the second your eyes want to look away or blink, or disconnect, it's your brain trying to figure it out or catch up, that's going to be the part that causes you problems um, in the audition. That's, it's almost every single time if that's, there's something like that, that's the part where the hang-up happens. For whatever reason, your mind has gotten to a place where that's trouble and it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit together, right? Um, so the technique that I use is I'll, I'll find a, spo- a point on the wall, I will Try and go through it again in rote, saying it to that point without without blinking. Um, that's that's one thing that I'll do. And then if you want to take it to another level, is use a point, use something like that, or or find something challenging to do. What I like to do is use uh, tennis balls and juggle. So do the same thing while you're focusing on juggling, and see if you can get the, through the whole thing. If you can do, if you can juggle, if you can do a difficult task, if you can get something done while you're repeating those lines, you are at a place where you can have free thoughts. And you, this is, and now this is for me, but you are at a place where you can begin to fill things in the day of the audition that will allow you to have fun, that it will allow you to play, that it will allow you to kind of be free in the moment. Um, without having to think of the words. The words kind of just come naturally and now other things get to fill in. And this is, this is for me, this, the reason this is so important is because once I'm at a place where I feel like I'm off brain, then I can really play and have fun with stuff. I can, I can go in there and say something like, uh, one of the classes that I took um, with one of my favorite coaches it was a class called Veiling, right? And in the class, you really work against those those things that you are supposed to be feeling that are written in the thing so if you're hurt you know if if there's if you're hurt the thing that you go in thinking is a motto like i'm fine i'm fine everything's fine and and your goal is to convince the person that you're fine everything's fine and what you find watching that is us as the viewer look at the person and go oh shit Everything is not fine. They're crumbling. Look at that. And you'll feel the more you try and protect, the more you try and put that on, the more it feels, the more you kind of are crumbling. Uh, And it was a really great lesson. But that kind of gave me the idea of I want to be able to free my mind up to play like that, to be able to go into uh, uh, an audition and just have fun with it and maybe try that on. And then maybe the next one, try something else on uh, and do it in different ways. Maybe this time I, I play with it. One of the things that helped me a lot was was going in, <clears throat> going in, and my first take, purposely trying to do it bad. Literally letting the reader know that I'm going to do it as over the top and crazy as I can. And I tell you, like tell you what, the amount of times I ended up using that take was uh, really funny. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of it for that lesson. Um, what I would say too is, this is what this is my process that I use now, and this is just for the memorization of the lines. Um, when it comes to 
using some of those strings and using those things that speak to your story that's a whole different process that i use my goal was to try and get this process as quick as possible so so i felt safe and secure when i went to set some of you may completely be fine with not feeling you know like you have the lines it's totally up to you if this can help you amazing uh, but this is not the only way this is just a way that's worked for me so far um, so with that said um, with the last thing uh, last thing I want to say too is um, I've done a ton of work on learning about memorization learning about how to get your brain firing at its best I actually I actually booked a job where I got COVID at the very beginning of the job <clears throat> and for for a month later i had the, the craziest brain fog memorizing for me was was so difficult and i had a lot of stuff i had to work on uh and it was a it was an incredible challenge for me uh, but one of the things i found in trying to kind of heal what was going on was if you can do this make sure you do this the day before at least the day before your audition because if you sleep on this your mind, we have, a, we have a, the ability to memorize and turn this into a pattern. And what you'll find is some of those moments that are tough, some of those things that you, you're having a hard time with, if you just allow yourself to sleep or even take a nap, like if you get a day of audition and you have to do it later that night, even if you give yourself a 15-minute nap or um, meditate before you do it, it'll allow you to go through a little bit of that deep cycle that... that goes from working memory into deep deep memory and it'll allow you to kind of uh, retain that much more so that said uh, that's the end of the lesson and if you guys have any questions feel free feel free to ask hey guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the lesson and if you would like a copy of that three-step memorization guide I've included a download link below I hope it helps and I'll see you next time